So our first example is a triangle, and make sure you label your sides. We have one side that is four inches. We have another side that is three inches, okay? So I labeled those, make sure you do the same, all right? Now in this triangle, make sure you also start labeling where the right angle is, where it is obviously right here, okay? Let me make that a little smaller. Very good, all right? So we're gonna go ahead and solve. The first step that we had already talked about is to write down the Pythagorean theorem, okay? And you guys are gonna start memorizing it, but it's a squared plus b squared equals c squared, all right? The second step is to label a, b, and c on the triangle, okay? The easiest thing for me to do always is to label c because it's always across from the right angle. This is gonna be c. And then as I said earlier, the legs, which are adjacent or they end up connecting and creating a right triangle, those are A and B. It does not matter which ones are A, which one is B, just make sure that each of the legs are A and B. All right, so we went ahead and did step two. Now step three, substitute A and B into the Pythagorean theorem. Okay, so we have our equation over here. Let's go ahead and sub them in. So instead of A squared, we're now going to have three squared, because that is my A, plus instead of B squared, it's going to be four squared equals C squared, okay? So the calculators you guys should be using are the silver easy ones that are in my classroom. And to find out what three squared is, you're just gonna do three times three plus, and then four squared would be four times four equals C squared, all right? So we're gonna go ahead and solve those. We have nine, plus 16 is equal to c squared. All right, we are continuing on into step four. We're still solving. Let's simplify by adding these two constants together. Nine plus 16 is 25 equals c squared. Now, we are not done. C is not alone, all right? So when you are squaring something, that means you're multiplying it to itself, much like we did with the three here and the four here. Okay, to do the opposite, to cancel it out, you take the square root of both sides. That means you find the number that is multiplied to itself that creates 25. On your silver calculators, you should have that sign available. What you're gonna do is type in 25, and then on the calculator, you're then going to click on that square root radical button and it will give you your answer. Right here, we are given five, and that's what C equals. Now, in geometry, which is what this is, you need to label the side. It's not just five, it's five inches. And that is how long the side is for our hypotenuse. A good way to check, too, is this hypotenuse should be the longest side of the triangle, and it is. It is five inches. That number is larger than both four and three. Now we can check our answer by plugging in all what we know to the Pythagorean theorem. So we write a squared plus b squared equals c squared, okay? We already know what a is, it is three, so I plug that in, three squared, plus b squared is four squared, okay? We're getting this just from the previous problem. Now we did just solve for c. c we have is five, so now we're gonna plug in five squared. If both sides are equal to each other, guys, that means we have checked our answer and we know that it's correct. 3 squared is 3 times 3, which is 9, plus 4 squared, 4 times 4 is 16, equals 5 squared, which is 5 times 5, 25, okay? Now all we have to do is add 9 and 16 together. When you do that, you do get 25. So our final answer for the checking is 25 equals 25. Since they are equal to each other, we know our answer is right, and five equals C was the correct answer that we received. All right, we're gonna continue on and do a couple more examples together before I set you free. We have our labeled sides that I went ahead and labeled for these two triangles. Go ahead and do it yourself. Um, on the first triangle, we have in centimeters now a couple decimals, all right? And so that's gonna help, our, our calculator is gonna help us a lot. The first thing I do want to do is label where my right triangle is in a, or right angle is in this triangle. And it's always between the two legs, okay? And even in the third one, if you want to go ahead and do it, our right angle is right here. It's going to help you if you label that angle for sure. 
All right, so let's go ahead into example two. Step one that we have written on the previous page was to write the Pythagorean theorem. A squared plus B squared equals C squared, okay? Process two, step two is to label A, B, and C on the right triangle. So across from the right angle, that's where we're always gonna start, that's C, it's always C. Now A and B are the legs and it does not matter which one is what, so I'm gonna label A on this left side and B over here. Again, you can switch them, you will get the same answer, okay? That is step two. Now, step three is gonna be to go ahead and plug in the numbers that we know into the equation. So, instead of a squared, we now have 0 0.5 squared plus, instead of b squared, we have 1.2 squared equals c squared. So, we're gonna go ahead and start simplifying this, okay? Now, if you wanna grab your calculator that you're using, that's completely fine, but 0 0.5 squared is the same as 0.5 times 0.5 to itself. That is 0.25, okay? Plus 1.2 squared is 1.2 times 1.2, you multiply it to itself, and that is 1.44, and you equal that to c squared. We can simplify that even more by adding the two together. So when you do 0.25 plus 1.44, you get 1.69 equals c squared. You are not done. C is not by himself. And just as we learned in the last problem, you're going to take the square root of both sides. It cancels out the square. So on your calculator, you're gonna write 1.69 and then that square root radical button to find your answer, okay? And the answer you should have gotten is 1.3 centimeters is C, okay? So if I plug that in and put that there, I'm gonna compare my answers, and this 1.3 should be larger than my other two, two sides because the hypotenuse is always the largest side. As I'm looking at the numbers, as I'm comparing, it is, okay? Now the other way to check, as we did before, is plug in our A, our B, and our C, and check it to make sure each side, each side is equal to each other. So my A is 0 0.5, so I do A squared plus B squared, 1.2 squared, equals, and what we got for C, we're gonna plug it in, 1.3 squared. So we're gonna hope that the left side is equal to the right side. If it is, we got it right, congratulations, okay? So, we are going to go ahead and square 0.5 as we did before. And that just means 0.5 times 0.5, which is 0.25, plus 1.2 squared is 1.2 times 1.2. That is 1.44. And then 1.3 squared is 1.3 times 1.3, and that is 1.69. Make sure you guys are trying this in your calculators as well. Now let's simplify the left side. Hopefully these two terms uh, equal the right side and then we know we'll get it right. 0.25 plus 1.44 is indeed 1.69. So because the left side of this equation equals the right side, we check it off, we know our answers are as right, we don't have to wonder about it, all right? Go ahead and try this last one on your own. I have labeled the right angle and the different side lengths. Make sure to follow all four steps of your Pythagorean theorem notes, and then go ahead and check your answer as well, all right? Pause it and then come back to see what your answer should be. All right, so this one was a little trickier by the end because we did have to round, and I didn't warn you about that. So hopefully you guys were able to round to the nearest tenth, one decimal place. Make sure you read the directions there. I know I didn't leave you one, but you should have gotten 7.3 yards. So a couple things you need to check. First off, did you plug in everything correctly? Did you put A and B in the right spots? Second, did you square them correctly? Did you get two squared is four, seven squared is 49? Third, did you add them correctly? Four plus 49 is 53. And then the very last step, remember that you have to take the square root. 53 is not your answer. The square root of that is, which was really 7.28 blah, blah, blah. You go on and on and on. But you are going to go ahead and um, for this problem, I wanted you guys to round to the one decimal place. If you did it to two, that's fine. But also make sure that you label your answer. 
all right? Now, in terms of this, if you are to check your answer, you might be very close um, each side, so we're gonna go ahead and do it together, but because you round, the answer might not be completely correct, okay? So, if I go ahead and check my answer, I have two squared plus seven squared equals 7.3 squared. That's what I got for C, okay? So I get four plus 49 equals, and then when I do 7.3 squared, I get 53.3 basically. Okay, so I'm rounding it a little bit. Okay, four plus 49 is 53. Now, because these guys are so close and because we had to round it, this does check off as okay, all right? So they're just 0.3 off from each other and we did have to round, so that does make sense. So our answer is correct. What you guys are gonna do um, is com do completely all four steps of the Pythagorean theorem and um, answer the following sheet and complete it in your notes, all right? You can check back and check your answers, but you must show all of the steps. I'm not going to show you the steps. I'm only going to show you the answers, and I will be looking back to make sure that you have every step and all the work showing in this uh, part of the worksheet. All right, so these are the five answers you should have gotten. Make sure that you have your work shown. If you don't have work, go back and show me all the steps that you guys have done to make sure that you found these answers correctly.